Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We weren't going to film an episode today, and then we realised we're modifying a car. And we're going to the track soon. And so there's a few mods that we would like to complete on this. Very interesting, very sort of slow, but not that slow anymore, but still slow. BRZ, which is actually a Toyota, which is actually made by Subaru, which has Subaru logos on it. But let's not get caught up in the details of that. Let's put some mods on it. That's right. We're, and you just, you're coming with us. We're hanging out. Full Today we're going, dis we're going full disrespected nose. What does that mean? It means I'm going to pull right open. Stick. Mom. I'm going to. There's so much I'm beats. Gonna, I'm going to. I'm going to. And then when you go, you're going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. Do you know what a disrespected nose actually is? A disrespected nose. Oh, it's beeping at me because you're standing too close. A disrespected nose is legitimately this, and it looks like this. Originally, it was called nostril slam, but now it's called oh, disrespected nose. But the nostril slam looks like this. That's I'm right. so excited. That was my nostril to, to many, work. many years ago, quite early on, um, before oh, selfie cam was a thing. Movie. Just like warning you, on the nose. if you're not up for a whole <laughs> lot of talking shit, oh. now might be a good time to click on that other boring video about something really nerdy no. that you want to learn. You We're should doing click that mods. and not watch modifying We're doing the BRZ. Mods. We're disrespecting your nose. We're There's not so many ways your nose. nose could be disrespected. The one that I just told you about that we probably beeped is the best way no. of disrespecting don't your nose. Don't disrespect it. There's lots of ways you could disrespect your nose. Some cost more money than others, but just don't, just don't disrespect your nose. We'll disrespect your nose for you on this episode of Mighty Carmel. Yeah, that's right. You got an old grey dude and some bald dickhead showing you, <laughs> <laughs> showing you how to modify your car. People, let's get in the mods. It occurred to me this morning, Marty, one of these stock, 105 kilowatts at the wheels. Yeah. One of these with headers on it, 117 kilowatts at the wheels. Yeah. One of these headers in a tune, 133 kilowatts at Pretty the wheels. Good. But at last the, time at, we... at the hubs. At the hubs. Sorry. Hub dynos um, read a little bit higher for anyone who was but interested in that. What we don't know, yes. what we didn't test, is the previous owner, I think he reckoned it had a tune on it but no headers. We don't know what one of these does with a tune and no headers. So I'm not actually going from 105 kilowatts to 133. I'm going from 100 and who knows to 133. 100. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Have any of you just tuned one of these but done no mods? What kind of power did it get? That's what we want to know. I think people who own these cars really, really, really like them. I get that impression. They do, Martin. They really like it. They like stancing them. They like racing them. And they are pretty cool for that, those exact purposes, aren't they? Yes, they are. So this which might look a little bit familiar, is um, basically a front and rear anti-roll bar or sway bar kit um, for our BRZ, made by Whiteline, um, Australian company. They make suspension and chassis tuning products. Um, really been around forever since I got my very first Subaru. This is like only just post 1990s. Um, this stuff was really popular in mods, particularly because this is a great mod as like a stage one handling upgrade. Yes, you that's don't right. To, you don't have to change your coil, coils or your springs or anything. You can if you want. We've lowered this a little bit. Um, the next step really is this. And the cool thing about this is if you do want to then go to coilovers, this stuff still works really well. Yes. You don't have to throw this in the bin just because you put coilovers in. This is almost a good in-between. And fine tuning and alignment is where this comes into its own. Yeah. And one of the things that we spoke about with Tyler from PVS, who was that, um, who's the guy that tuned this, who was a V8 supercars driver, he was like coilovers, while they may be something that people just want to slam their cars on the street, what they do give you is a huge range of adjustability for performance on the track for yep. dialing. But what we found over the years, what gives you, of course, the best, best bang for buck, as we spoke about in our uh, mods video recently, is going to be wheels and tyres. Yep. Like that is what's going to give you best bang for buck. We have done an episode where we did the um, wheels and tyres versus coilovers. Uh, wheels and tyres did great. These are Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. These are 245s. Um, 35Z R18 uh, and they're on some Mad Weds wheels. That's what we're doing. We're going to the track in a couple of days. There's going to be a battle of basically two blue Subarus. A cheap Subaru versus an expensive Subaru. You can decide which one's which. Martin, 
How much is a how much is a two door WRX STI Before worth? Before or after two door tax though, because it's the no same with car. the tax. Because we know the car's yeah. worth twenty thousand dollars. We know that, but no, they're worth less than that even. Oh, are they? Yeah. It's it's like R thirty four GTRs. How much are they actually worth? Yeah, exactly. Forty thousand dollars. Yeah, you yeah. reckon? Well, 40, no, but, but forty five. But what actually I, 140. What, what I would say to that, the difference is if you could buy a four door. R34 GTR that is otherwise identical, same length drive shaft, same floor mat, same yeah. everything, and that was half the price. Yeah. Then it would be comparable to the situation with my car. Okay. Because my two door is a four door or a wagon with a different body on it, otherwise okay. identical. But there, some people have sold them for 80, 70. To, I've seen at the moment they're going for 80 grand. Mine was like half that. Like it's cool. not. Okay. Not, we're not Yours talking. is worth more now though, because you've put time and effort in. It's been painted. Yeah, it's whatever. I, I bought so let's that split work. the difference and call it 60. No. Come on, man. No, it's not worth 60 well, grand, I'm calling it? it 65. So what we're going to do is we're going to see the difference between a $15,000 car and a $60,000 car on no, the track. No, the cars are actually... That's an unfair comparison because they're actually, actually both worth the same amount. Exactly. Except they're, what, they're worth what the market will pay and the market will pay way more for yours than they would for mine. Yes, although that's a 20 grand car. A Ford or STI is a 20 grand car also. But, okay. that's, that's, that's... but you have two less doors, so it's worth three times as much. I know. Much. <laughs> this is the weird, this is the weird world, but this is not just cars. No. This is art, this is music, this Fashion. is food. Like, do you want to eat the butt out of a seagull that's steamed with some olive juice? I have a friend that can catch them. Okay. Like, look, reliably. Okay. He's also a Subaru owner. Really? Like, the kind of, like he's, so, he's so good at all this stuff. And he can... Like has a technique to sneak up on a seagull and capture it and then like release. A duck or a seagull? No, a seagull. Really? And they're hard to catch. Wow. But you know, they're, they're creatures and we have to be nice to them because they are creatures on the earth like we're creatures on this earth. And they don't make YouTube videos about Subaru as we do. <laughs> Good. <laughs> this is what disrespected nose is. Front or rear? Learning about things we don't care about. Are we but we do care about. Are we putting it in the front or putting it in the rear? Martin, we're about to put our quick jacks on, but I just remembered no, quick jacks don't fit because of our side body Oh, that's stuff. right. we got to jack off the front. All right, good. But I just remembered, people, we've got some new stuff. Check this out. We have got cherry-scented unicorn air fresheners. Look at these. Absolutely incredible. Of course, there's the original JDM melon ones as well. I'm going to put a link for each one of these things down below. Cherry. Cherry was by popular demand. Apparently, people love cherry air fresheners. Exactly. They're, so not, they're not melons. They don't smell like a mad... Like melons, yeah, but they um, smell like cherry, like most used cars that you buy. These exactly. So if your car doesn't smell great, go pop a cherry in your car. We have got uh, magnets as well, toolbox magnets. Bang! Look at that. We've already got some on there. Bang! There they go. Um, we have got goat rider sticker, another toolbox sticker. That's just me and Marty riding a goat because that's what we do. All new chopped lanyards, chopped but on a lanyard. Who would have thought? We've now got a black range because a bunch of people were saying, hey, can we have black stickers for white cars? So we've got chopped in black and we've got a Japanese version. So you can get chopped and small chopped. And then we've got choppu. Is it choppu? It's Is choppu. That... Choppu. Yep. Um, and choppu in white. We've got them small and we've got them big. And then we've got Mighty Car Mods just in black as well. That's the new stuff. Of course, you can still get all the other stuff like hats and things like that. So... Go grab them. They're on the store. We don't do a Patreon or anything like that, but that is how you support the show um, if you would like to. If you don't want to, there ain't no paywalls. There's none of that shit. You get everything anyway. But if you do want to support us, that would be uh, excellent. And yes, if you'd notice these Mighty Car Mods WD-40, you can get them in Australia. Maybe you'll be able to get them overseas one day, but for now, you can't. Can you come and push your BRZ onto these things? No worries, mate. I can't mate. do it by myself. It usually takes three rocks to get them up there, I've found. And here we go. And... One more, and then I'll give it the old Misty's wristy. Is that high enough? Do we make it? No. Yeah. No. One more. One more. Oh, it's up a bit. We could try. Or we could just do the job properly. Imagine that. Give it a mad, proper, big heave ho. Come back go. a bit. Back a little bit. Yep. And up we go. <coughs> oh. Oh. Fail. <laughs> just backwards. Back up it on it. It's never going up. Nah. <laughs> well. Thanks for watching this episode of Mighty BRZ Mods where we couldn't even get the things onto a thing. Here's the riveting, the riveting thing of Mighty Car Mods. Martin, no edits, no cuts. I've noticed a bit of a new trend on YouTube. Oh, no, you and haven't. And trends come along and trends come along and go. Is someone eating something or is someone filming that they're breaking up or is it some other rubbish? There's heaps of we broke up. Why is it breaking up that? videos? That's weird. But then they're both you people and I will never post a video about. like that. 
Well, we're not going to break up. We're never going to break up. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Watch yourself, mate. Watch yourself, <laughs> mate. Um, no, it's people asking everybody up. Yeah. My mom. You need to push so I can handbrake. All right, I'm going to push. Ready? Go. Yep. Yeah, nice. It's people at the start of their videos asking the audience, make sure you watch the whole thing. Oh. Hey guys, I got some really important news um, and this is what's going to happen, but make sure you watch the whole video. I don't care if you watch the whole video or not. They but don't also, have to. What about? They shouldn't be told to subscribe. Make sure you sub I mean, you can, but it's okay if you don't. They shouldn't be told. They don't have to be told. Why do the titles of videos on the internet tell people what to feel? Oh, hashtag emotional. Whatever. Hashtag sad, hashtag happy, hashtag whatever. Like, what should t today should be? Man, oh, this is the thing. Because so we've got to come up be... with a title. And the people Today should to just be BRZ, disrespected nose, asterisk, emotional, asterisk. Emotional in capital letters. Why asterisk? Astri? Well, I don't know. Astri, that's a hard word. Ast oh, no. It's one of those words now. You know those words where you get stuck on them? Like, astri I can't say it anymore. Let's jack the thing up and let's put some mods on there because that's why the people are here. Is it? Aren't they, Martin? I don't know. Sometimes. Are they? I don't know. Is that why you're here? Yep. Five, six, seven. Coming down. All right, bring it down, Martin. Coming down. Martin, how are you feeling now the Super Turbo's on the road? What an really epic good. adventure that's been. Really good, yeah. The, jumping through all the hoops for registration was really painful, actually. Um, as I guess it is with, with all cars when you're dealing with imports. That's three hours down at Service New South Wales. Oh my God. It always takes so long. Yeah, and it doesn't you know even matter if it's not that busy. It just takes and ages. They're generally really nice too. Like it's not. It's not like they're trying to make it hard for you. It's just. It's actually a real process, and they all get audited and stuff. So like, that it has to be right. Because it's. They did not used to be nice though. Anyone yeah. who lives in New South Wales that's had a modified car over the last twenty years would know they did not used to be nice no. at all. I think they've really worked on that, which is great, actually, because it means that even if you get, like, you know, knocked back because your paperwork's not right or something, at least they're cool about it, whereas they used to... It's, it felt like it was full of, like, angry old Cheryls... Yes. ..who just wanted to try and prevent you from enjoying your car. Yeah. Or get, getting your licence or whatever, you know? Not so much anymore. No, it was good. It just took ages, but it got there. Got oh, the that's plates. going down, mate. It's, it's not going up. Right. You've got to twist the doodle on the doodle. It's just I don't have much room to actually jack the jack. Oh, okay, no, it's gone now. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. So we've got to head out for a little JDM Nugget cruise. A yeah. little Mira Super Turbo and VTEC Mini. Yep. Still a little controversy about that being a JDM car, even though it meets the definition of a JDM car. Really? Yeah. Because it is a JDM Mini or a Jap Spec Mini. It was made specifically for the Japanese market. The interesting thing about this jack, and because of this episode and the disrespect of the nose, I'm going to tell you the whole story, is that, don't roll your eyes, is that um, these jacks for a while, when we first got Costco, because we didn't have Costco for ages, our American and Canadian friends would be like, Costco, had it forever. We only got it like, I don't know, a decade ago maybe? Yeah. Um, and it was a big deal because we never had those kind of big box stores. Anyway, for a time, this jack was available at Costco and it was like 160 bucks. Yeah. Low profile, lowered cars, blah, blah, all that good stuff. Are um, you at maximum height? Is this it? Um, I could go a little bit higher, but we just want it even. Really? Yeah. So it's you just not... need to go a bit higher, man, if you can. How's that? Hold on. We've got to come back down on the jack. Yeah. Anyway, for a while you get these at Costco. They sold like absolute hot cakes. They were the hot there sauce. We go. Everyone That's was good. talking about them. Um, and then they disappeared. It's a bit, of, bit mysterious as to why. But I guess they just did one massive run of them in some factory somewhere and Costco sold them and they were sold out and that's it. And they replaced them with another jack, but it was like not as good for lowered cars. It was bigger, it was heavier. You couldn't get it, as, you couldn't get it under cars as easily. And so these are still like fetching a premium before race wars. Oh, the Costco jack. Yeah, that particular jack. But I think it's probably something to do with the load rating of it. Like it's, it's not a, it's only meant for light cars, like 1.5 tons or something. So... Light duty. Before what we're doing here, it's perfect. Gets the job done. Let's modify a car, people. So, sway bar's off, huh? This no, would good be tip. Here's a mad tip. Why is you on a horse? Here's a mad tip. If you're doing this kind of stuff on the ground, do yourself a favour and before you jump on the ground, sweep it out. Because if you've done work on your car before on your garage or your driveway or the street or whatever it is you're doing it, 
chances are it's going to be crap on the ground and you end up rolling all over it and then all your clothes get munted and you get dirty and you get stuff yeah. on you. So Most people blowout. actually use rollies. We're like some of the only I'm gonna people use my, use I'm going to use my blower. Check out my massive blower I got. Yes. Here's a, here's a question for you people. If you have a tool like my blower here, this is a brushless 18 volt Roby one. If you have a button on it that says turbo boost, I can't not press turbo boost. Like if you just no, press no. this, like, okay, you get a bit of air, right? But it's if you're not just gonna go. Look at the shop lag, look. It's if you're not gonna do that. So my question is, should you put turbo boost on it? Or should it just always be on boost? No, no, you need the button. What it's for? like a boost control. Do you man. think this is a do you think when they design this product, I mean we should ask them because maybe they'll know. Do you think that's there to excite the user or do you think it's actually like No, I think it? because when you're not using it, you could because like in workshops and stuff like that, if you just go full blow, it's just, ah, everywhere. Like the Ryobi workshop blower, you can lower it just to kind of move stuff away. Sometimes there's that one leaf that's got a bit of water on it. Yeah. You could just step forward and kick it. No, no boost button. Turbo boost, see you buddy! Off it goes. Well, this is what I like to do, is just blow all the dust out from under the car. Like that, and then you're not rolling around in dust. I mean, you're breathing it in probably, but you're not rolling around in it, and that's good. You can get back on the wall. The tip you didn't even know you needed. The sway bar is hidden up in the guts of the car, so I reckon like pretty much every mod ever for BRZ or 86 starts with, step one, jack up your car. Step two, remove the under tray. All right, I'll get the little doodle with the doodle. Oh, you get off with Have that. Have you got, you got the some doodle pliers? Already? Yeah, just to yank them out. And then I got a whizzer to get these ones. Watch your ear holes. Bye bye. Yeah, sway bar's up under there, the back. Okay. It does differ in design from the WRX. Probably because there's no drive shafts to take care of. Because it's a totally different car machine. Because it's pure, not this all drive impurity. I was thinking about this idea of purity, BMW, M cars and stuff like, people yeah. have this idea of it's pure if it's rear wheel drive, but then that's a turbo car, that's twin turbo six, Yeah. and people go, but purity is also naturally aspirated, so, right. so I almost think that purity is some marketing bullshit because they'll <laughs> just say it's pure if they can sell more of whatever their product is. Oh yeah. Because is twin turbo pure? I would argue that's not pure, Martin. Why? Because there's two filthy turbos there. <laughs> Cutting down the sound of your awesome naturally aspirated engine. Can you pass me your diesel back? Yeah, here you go. Oh, it doesn't have it. It's got a 12 on it, but there's a 10. Oh no, it's got a 10 on it. You're good. Um, oh, yeah, no. man. I, look, I'm the last person to, to to give any good, solid opinion on the whole purity thing because I'm not really into collectible cars. You know, maybe that's an old man thing. I think it's possible that it's just bullshit, Martin. No, I, I think it's an old man thing. I reckon. Here's here's my theory that no one asked for. I reckon that by the time you get a bit older and you really are, that one's a 12? Yeah. You really are grasping onto your youth and grasping onto all the things that were meaningful in the most exciting time of your life. Which a is midlife probably, crisis yeah. then? Well, no, nah, not necessarily. Even I reckon older, older than that usual sort of 50, 60 thing. Um, I reckon, oh, is the sway bar back there? It is, isn't it? It's not when, oh, we had to take this off anyway, but whatever. Um, I reckon by that time, and you're seriously trying to grasp onto all that old stuff, it means even more. Therefore, if anyone messes with it, they've messed with your youth. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, we're back when I was young, and my Mini was natural aspirated, and that's the, it was the best, even though it wasn't. And at the time, if someone had said, hey, I'm going to drop a twin turbo, you know, twin charge system on your Mini, when you were 25, you would have jumped at it. Yeah. But only now you're an old dickhead, are you like, Oh, no, nah, no, nah, it's got to be pure. Like, why? Oh, yeah. If you're in, like, most people who are into cars are into modifying them because it makes them better. Yeah. It's the but whole thing. This is also the argument of people saying if the factory wanted a car to do a certain thing, they would have done it from the factory. No, they wouldn't because no. they do. They had to make a car to a budget yep. and they had no money. And yep. when we met the dude who, was, um, who designed the Focus RS, what kind of car did he drive? He had a Porsche 911. He was just like, I love them. They're really good. Yeah. Because other cars, they go, you have this much. I couldn't even see that. You have this much money for yeah. wheels, this much money for suspension, this yep. much whatever, and they have to make a car to that. Yep. I've missed something, haven't I? Uh, maybe at the, there's a sneaky one at the back too. Oh no, maybe it's just hooked on. Oh no, there is one. I just you got? See it. Um, yeah, I had this conversation recently with um, with someone who works for like works for a, a car make, and um, and it was to do with with electronic throttles and um, like 
smart gearboxes like you know DSGs <coughs> or modern automatics. Yeah. And that a lot of the time people talk about oh the throttle response is not the same in an e-throttle car, and that's usually because it's got that slight lag. You know how it sort of yeah, it yeah. brings the power yeah. on soft. And you go, well, well, why would you do that? And the answer is because then we don't have to spend as much on warranty replacing engine mounts. Like they oh, would have right, a spreadsheet. because it's not winding it on as hard. Exactly. They'd have a spreadsheet with a line item of saying, this 2003 Corolla, we got 4 million cars back with broken engine mounts and that cost us $85 million. Yeah. If they can put an e-throttle in it in the 2004 Corolla, that means they don't have to change engine mounts because when you floor it, it just kind of ramps the power on gently and doesn't jerk the engine mounts. Yep. They're going to do it for $85 million. They are, Martin. Because that's $85 million back in their shareholders' pockets. And because they're running a company, Martin. Yeah, exactly. They're running a business. So, the business has to make so some money. The moral of that story is people are tripping if they think that just because it's completely original, that is the best the car's ever going to be. No, that's, that's the way the car might have been when you first had it. And maybe that's the way you remember it. It's the way it was made, probably due to economic restraints of who I was making it at the exactly. time. Exactly. I'm sure that's not the case with like, you know, a Lamborghini necessarily, because they are made to be, you know, like the price is just what the price is. And that's that's different. But if you're talking about like a mass produced, you know, something by robots in the eighties or nineties, a lot of dirt fell off with that under tray. I don't reckon it's the same. Anyway, it's a long Long answer to a question nobody asked. Martin, that's a disrespected answer. Can you find I the like sway bar? Because I couldn't find it. Yeah. Have you found it? Yeah. Is it really hard to get to? Yeah. Of course it is. BRZ so life. So, from here to here, down to here, but up here... How do you do, get it Do out? we have to, like... We have to take the wheels off, don't we? this? No. Oh, we could, do, this? we could do sensible things and look it up. I reckon we pull it out sideways, as in take the wheel off and pull it that way. But and how do we get in out. here? Just with a little, little. Yeah, mate, we, we, I can get, to, I can get to that one with a spanner. I reckon. Well, I'm gonna, I've got my foot on my. Here's my big, my big. Spanner oh, that's smart. You brought it in thing. with you. It's my smart. Tool Pro ratchet. That's I got these from Super Cheap Auto. I really like them. I think they're good. It depends whether you're like a, all the tools in one spot type person, or you're a, or a tool chest type person. <laughs> There seems to be two people in these world, in this world. So they're 12s. Yeah. But can you get to them with a ratchet spanner, maybe? Or maybe a socket wrench. That's maybe what that's relief is for, so you can get a socket wrench in there. No, this they is. They do nice things like that at the Subaru factory. No, this is working. It, it's, it is working. Okay, cool. After the same thing, um, I've got. That looks like a 14, but we'll need a spanner with an Allen key thing through it. And you know what we did? What we forgot to do? Bring the WD-40? Yep, we've got to spray everything. You're also rolling around in a whole lot of dirt off that under tray too. Yeah, it's pretty great. Could you hand me the WD-40 please, I mate? I can. Oh, thank you very much. I'll give yours a spray as well, and make life a little easier for you. Over there. So much crap on my shoes. Over there, and over there. I walked in mud this morning, and now I'm leaving mud everywhere, sorry. That's all right, mate. Um, all right, a little bit in there. I've got spanners and I've got Allen key thingos. Are we going to like have a look and see how it's done or just keep going doing nah, our own thing? We're just going to freestyle until it doesn't work and then we'll do what we should have done at the start and actually look it up. All right. That's good. how you learn. Good, Martin. <laughs> but at least in this car everything will be metric and just work and we will have zero problems. It's just going to work. And that's going to be a 14 because Japan, it's a 17, so that's okay. And I'm probably not going to be able to do it from here because I've got no access. Can you imagine how easy this would be in a hoist? Uh, I don't have to imagine it because we did yours on a hoist that's just a couple easy. of days ago, remember? But it's actually fine. Not that hard. Mine's just. Get off. All right. He's off. No, it's going to need some. Um, some whacking, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that one's off. Tight. You can just go over there. Need so some whacking or some. I can lose you later. Break a bar reaction. Okay. Ugh. I'll undo the top here, and then we'll. More oh, dirt came off working. my shoes. More dirt came off my shoes. Are we taking the wheels off, man? Uh, we might have to. Yeah, at some point. I was just gonna, so I only take them off if we turned out that we really needed to do it.
Oh, Martin, there's a bloody <laughs> hole right here to stick a f thing through there. Oh, is that what that's for? <laughs> nah. Oh. Oh, did it work? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you, Subaru. I'm there doing one click of the ratchet at a time. And the sway bar is properly tucked up under here. What are the chances that this has to come off? They're probably high, Martin. Do you reckon? The thing is, if I do a YouTube video, how to remove sway bar, it's going to be some dude who sits there talking about why you what should do it. breakfast. And then he's going to go and film himself eating noodles. And then at the end of the video, he'll go, oh, I did it, but the camera didn't work. And, and now it's done. And show the bit, yeah. But no, I think... No, know, actually, I'm going to give YouTube the benefit of the doubt. That's a big spider on my leg. Oh, ah! Sorry, dude. There's, I'm not arachnophobic, but he's a big guy. And I can't kill him because he's got a soul just like the rest of us. Is he on your leg? No, he's just on the front of the car right where I have to slide out. Oh, really? Uh, 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 uh. So, where? Point. He's a big, long, leggy guy. Look at him. Whoa. Oh, whoa. He's a big guy and he's alive. He's massive. The next step is to remove... Um, this video is actually really good. ...these lower subframe connectors. And we're going to drop the entire thing, the, the sway bar and the subframe, because that's way easier than uh, loosening... So you reckon drop the entire thing? Do you reckon, Marty, or just continue doing what we've nah, been nah, doing? No, no, we'll drop these um, connectors off. It's just the fact that there's plastic... over. Uh, there's plastic trays over one of the bolts. Yeah. So all I'm interested to know is if you have to pull the whole pay off, or if you can just whack a, I think you can probably just whack a ratchet in there. But if you get a ratchet, if you can grab a wizard with a 14 on it, yep. and, a, and a ratchet with a 14 and a short extension, I think that'll be all we need. And we'll yep. just drop the whole thing out. No worries, man. So this 17 mil nut comes off, the sway bar link just pops out of the sway bar. And now that's free to move, but these cross brace sub chassis thingos, um, the easiest way is going to be just to drop both of them out and the sway bar can come with it. So there's two big 14s there. There's some ear holes for Thank you, you mate. Sir. And then there's also one hidden down behind this tray though, so we just got to work out if we get a ratchet in there or what. And I suggest we do them first. Generally do a good idea to start with the hardest bolt. Yeah, so what size is that one? 14 as well, but might need it on a ratchet. I don't really want to take the entire tray off the whole back of the car just to get to one bolt. And then we can just do that. Well, I say just, but it's actually kind of tricky. There it goes. Awesome. Start with the hardest bolt. Good tip. Because then all the rest are just whiz off with the dak dak. Whiz off with the dak dak. You winning, Martin? Yeah, I think so. You just do the same thing under this on this crappy one, that's the under tray, and hopefully it drops down on our faces. There you go, mate. Yeah, so apparently the world is like a number of dB quieter than we perceive it and our brains are amplifying it. But aren't we the only thing that perceives, that, we, that can report it, so therefore what we perceive is real? Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's some relative way of quantifying volume versus how perception of volume versus how they measure it, but then certainly it would be a human calibration of the tools that are measuring it. Yeah, I always wonder about that. It's like, oh, that's... Yeah, but you can, you can say the same thing about colours and stuff as well. I think colour blindness is quite interesting, don't you? It's like some people can't see the difference between, say, like green and red. Well, yeah, there was that thing that went green. around ages ago, is that like a dress, is it grey or is it blue or something? And all, everyone's arguing yeah. about it. But actually, instead of arguing about it, we should just celebrate the difference in people, mate. You might need to sock it on there. To, oh, no, you got it. Is it going to go for you? Yeah, all right. So... And then we can just dack dack the rest, but it will fall on our head. So I suggest we move towards the front of the vehicle slightly. No worries, mate. All right, Martin, that's out. Dack dack. So now, here's the dack. Yeah, go this way. Just put the doodle on the doodle. This is very cosy, isn't it? All right. The back one first, I reckon. Nice. You want to do your back one also? Yep. Watch your eyeballs. And then if we go forward, when it comes down, it can just drop it over here. All right. Okay, here we go. Two front ones. There you go. We probably should have some goggles on. Yep. Just don't be directly under it. That's one key for success. All right, this might drop now. All right, so holding it in. 
Anything? Sway bar mounts? Oh, these have got a little clip as well on the side. There's a, uh, where's the flathead? Oh, just to knock it out? Yeah. Oh, it does too, yeah. Cool, I couldn't see it. Oh, there. Just go. Pop. There we go. Pop goes the sway bar, chucks the screwdriver. That's probably a good thing that the back's being held in there. Chuck us a light, I can't actually see what I'm doing. This, this light is pointing the wrong way. Look how helpful this light was, pointing in the wrong direction. All right, so, can this drop down now? Hey, that's cool. There now it is. Take it out and swap it. There hasn't been a very excellent organisation of the bolts under the car, Martin. Nah, doesn't matter. I've just been throwing stuff all over the place. Good. Um, all right. That, now we only need that and that. Right, this that goes, goes like so. And then these are our new greaseless, greaseless technology, Martin. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm a fan. Furry inside. Yep. Furry like carpet. Boom. So this is thicker than the factory one and it has adjustable pickup points on it, which means you can change the behavior of it. And then we put these things back on. It's going to go, let's go that way. Yep, that way. And then up the top like that. Uh, that wow. one. Yeah, and then that one through that slit there. Oh, like so. Cool. Then we just smack these 14s back in there. And try and get the, get it even left to right, yeah, like that. And then it's got these little, these little stays as well, just like the factory one does. I guess to oh, stop right, the side, to too much side to side movement. Do you reckon I can send these yet, or just kind of? No, I reckon I'd keep I'd, them a bit I'd loose. Them, yeah. Don't ever eat too many cherries. Oh why? I just learnt that the other night. Did you? And turns out everyone I know, except for me, knows about cherries. Really? When I saw a bunch of mates last night. I said, I didn't sleep very well the other night. I literally only got to sleep at like 3 a.m. because I was off my guts. Yep, literally. And they said, oh, what did you do? And I was just like, well, I ate a bunch of cherries and they all just went, oh, you didn't eat cherries before bed. <laughs> it's said, probably one of those things that you're supposed to learn as a kid, but like, Yeah, no one ever did. told me. And they're just like, you never eat cherries before going to bed. <laughs> and I was like, why not? Um, like, I mean, I know why not, because I was just... It was horrendous, man. I was just, it was explosive. <laughs> I just, like, it's just, there's diarrhea. That, it's just horrendous. I'm only telling everybody so that you get public a bit service of a, announcement. a public service announcement. Don't eat cherries before you go to bed. No. Far out. It's so bad. Don't eat them for breakfast either. Really? Yeah. Do you know how I know? No. Because I had them for breakfast. Today? Yeah. Did you? Sorry, man. Did you really? Yeah, sorry. So apparently the amount of like carbs in them or something, they upset like the flora fauna of your gut and like... <laughs> the fauna. Or something? Is that what it's called? The, the, I just the imagine macro a wombat, something or I just other? imagine a wombat ro roaming around in the guts at that point when you said fauna. Oh, and it was just terrible. Look, I know like a fart is just a poo saying hello. But this was a very long conversation <laughs> <laughs> and not one that anybody needs in the middle of the night. In so deck. consider yourself warned, yep. cherries before bed. You heard it here, people. An absolute nightmare. Don't eat cherries before bed. Come to Mighty Car Mods for all of the information you didn't think you needed to know and, and more. Do. Life lessons. So much, much nice aftermarket stuff available for BRZ86, isn't there? Oh, yeah. It's just... And it's just all modern and like works and I don't know, man, I'm a bit of a fan. Just such a good, such a good car for modifying. It really is. If that's what you're into. into. Learning how to do stuff on. Yeah. All right. That's. Can we just give that a little flip? So I can just get these guys back on. Look at this little access hole. Oh, see, does that make anyone else just feel wonderful? That's you know what great. I mean? Like that just. Yep. Look, look, look at what's going on there. Yep. It's just so good. You might have seen these little dac -dacs. We show them a lot because we really like them. We got these from Japan, except as Marty's spoken about, the stem on the Japanese ones are too big, doesn't fit in our tools, but angle guy and a zip, off you go. Every time we go, we buy these because then we lose them. Actually, I lose them. You don't lose stuff, do you? No, people borrow it and then I lose it. Yeah, that's called stealing, well, isn't it? Really? I mean, let's call depends it on, it Depends is. on the intention, doesn't it? Oh, that's a philosophical debate, isn't it, Martin? Whiz. Are we whacking this one back in? Um, 
I might take the wheel. Oh no, I'll give you a hand putting that back in. Actually, you know what? Let's take the wheels, wheels off. We'll off. be able to get in. We'll be able to get in there easier. Won't be quite as intimate. Does it have a lock, a rock nut or anything, or no. is it just not a 19 mil yellow? Oh, I was gonna steal you, is I? We used to have two rattle guns, and now we only have one. I have one at home, but that's my home one. I think I got a bit carried away and oh, I had my, my original one. Where is it? Maybe it's in. Know. No, I don't think it is. Oh well, we'll just have to share this one for today. Roby, if you're listening, can I have another rattle? <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Do you know what, Martin? What? Dear Ryobi, can we please have three more rattle guns? What? One for us and two for our friends. Two to give away on our shop. Sure. We'll give them away to someone who's watching. How are we going to give them away, Martin? I don't know yet. Don't know. I haven't worked that up because I'm making this up as I go. Ryobi, please send us three of them. We will give away two of them. Actually, you know what, Martin? That's too hard to do it on here. We'll give them away on Facebook. And right, we'll do cool. a thing, and the person who writes a thing that we think's funny or they answer the question, we'll give two of them away. Sounds good there. to me. Done. Oh, I'm just going to put these in my little side pocket. So, Friday is the big day, the big BRZ versus WRX battle. Yep. It's not that big, we're just going to have a fun time. Yep. Um, but um, both cars do need to get a wheel alignment um, first. That has not happened yet. Nope. And, um, and it's going to be really interesting to see the changing technology. Everybody wants their car to go faster, but most people assume that more power makes more fast. It does, but actually... Not always. It sounds boring, but it's like the handling, the tyres, the on brakes. A, on a track, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, on, on a track. Yep. On the street, it actually doesn't matter that much. As much. But on and the also track, on the does. street. On the street. In the seconds. I think on the street, too, people are really into the, you know, um, you know, you're, like rolling starts and stuff. Like you're already driving and then you floor it. It's like your handling mods aren't going to make much difference to yeah. that unless you're really into like mountain roads and stuff. That doesn't seem that popular in Australia, but if you ever look at versus videos on YouTube, like this car versus that car, yeah. they're always. In America, they seem to be really into it. There's heaps of videos of people street racing. Can canyon um, roads and stuff. And um, in Mexico on highways, it's yep. just, it seems to be a thing. In Australia, not so much. Nah, I think it's... Um, Maybe Australians are less competitive. I don't reckon. I reckon that uh, we, we've got law enforcement that's a bit more keen on seeing it not happen. Really? Yeah, I reckon. See, I reckon maybe it's more of a cultural thing. Because mine's in, I tucked it into the plastic first. All right, there we go. Cool, yeah. all right. I reckon loose them, put them all in loose. And I think this longer bolt goes through that one. The outside? Yeah, the one that's not tucked into the plastic. Which I'll put it there so it doesn't chop my fingers off. And then I'll put the crappy, crappy bolt in afterwards. And there. All right. That's pretty cool, man. You can just pull your, you pull your whole sway bar assembly out. And it looks like we can just throw these adjustable drop links straight in from the outside and attach them to the sway bar and job done. It's front that's pretty done, cool. Man. That's great. The back should be a rewarding process also. The sway bar is probably trying to like pull it around a bit, but if you just force it somewhat, second that bolt started, you'll be fine. Yep, we did. Cool. 14 mil. Turn that one. Whiz. Right Whiz. Man, electric hand tools have changed the game because they didn't really exist when I started modifying cars, and it wasn't that long ago. And you could buy like at a battery drill and that was kind of it, otherwise you were using air tools. Yeah. But even, even cheap air compressors had only just started to become a thing as well. It's amazing how much that's changed the ability of, you know, your average Joe to be able to do stuff that once upon a time, if you didn't have hand tools, you really would struggle. Yeah. I'm just gonna do some whistle. I'm just trying to not do ear holes just for a second. Yep. I can get to that one now. Use earmuffs, everyone. Cool. And then just the annoying bolt to do now. A child is legally allowed to drive these cars. 
<laughs> child. Yeah, you can. I'm pretty sure these are like red pea plate legal. Oh, they would be. Which yeah, is a child. Sure. So in yeah. Australia, an adult's considered 18. I think a 17 year old is allowed to drive these cars. That's how slow they are. An adolescent. But our government, which is very, <laughs> very nanny like, yep. allows someone who is technically a child yeah, to right. drive this car. Hey, we've got to put the little plastic plug back in this side too, yep. don't we? Cool, so the sway bar links on this car is a different design to the WRX and the sway bar links go halfway up the shock absorber which is very different to the WRX where they're like on the, the, on the actual arms. Says. WRX, STI, oh yeah, we've got to start calling it STI. That's what got us into trouble with the sway bar links on that, isn't it? And we're going to put this in the, the lower hole because that's going to give it more bendiness. Because if you want it stiffer again, you use that hole because you've reduced the what you, I don't know some technical stuff. So now we just remove these links and replace them, right? Yeah, exactly. With the with the new ones, everything else under here is whizzed up, isn't it? It's just yep. under tray still to go. Yep. Did you get it the whole way off, or are you gonna need to Allen key it? No. Yeah, the the whizzer got it most of the way, but then you need a ratcheting spanner or a normal spanner if you like a punish, and then you can get the whole thing off. What size Allen key is it? Uh, I think it's a five mil, but you can use this one because mine's just, mine's just come off. Here you go. Use that combo. Thank so this are. is the old link. It's the old link. And that is our adjustable aftermarket one. And that's cool because when you're wheel aligning it, you can actually like change the height and the relationship between the shock and the sway bar and all sorts of other nerdy stuff that I don't really completely understand. What I do know is when you're putting this stuff in, it often makes sense to at least adjust it to the same length as the factory one, so it's no different from how it was, and then let your wheel alignment expert person um, set it up for you. Or you could go and research wheel aligning and do it yourself once you understand the theory of it, but it is rather complex and takes a bit of experience, I find. So that out, this on. You just grab the middle, so when you're adjusting it, all you need to do is stick a spanner on that and you can change the length. So there it goes. And it just automatically does both sides. And then you just lock it down. But you still want to have a certain amount of thread in there so you can't go too crazy um, because it still needs to be engaged within that. That's a good starting point. Leave it there. Let alignment experts take care of the rest. All right, so almost there. That looks pretty good. I actually have no idea what a fish's vagina looks like. That's a good question, Martin. Work out what it smells like. I felt my toe actually go in. Definitely alpaca man. Like I thought it was sheep. So it looked like porridge, but it was running. Smells like a person. He squatted down on my big toe. Under tension. Have to be quite careful. All right, so we are going to put the front wheels back on. Then we're going to take the rear wheels off. Even if we don't need to, we're going to anyway, because it might make things a little bit easier for us. So did you just get your first car and you want to know what kind of mods to do, how to be rolling legit on the street? We've got a mad new multi-pack just for you. Mighty Car Mod sticker, lay that on the back window looking like a boss. The chopped fingers, the universal symbol of just generally winning. We've got an air freshener. This here is in JDM Cherry, which means that it smells like Japan deliciousness, inspired by the vending machines of Tokyo. Um, we've got a chopped magnet for your fridge or your toolbox. Uh, you get three service labels, which you can stick up here so you know when you've changed your oil. You get your tyre valve caps made of metal. Excellent little choppy fingers on the edge. You get those and then our brand new chopped lanyard for bossing it up. Put your car keys on that. That is your Mighty Car Mods starter pack. And we have them discounted available on the Mighty Car Mods shop. So get on. Hello, Martin. What are you going to do? Just make yep. sure it's really, really in there. Peel it back on itself. Chop. Fingers installed. All right, Martin. Rear sway bar. Whizzle. Generally, generally rear sway bars are easier than the front. There's not as much going on back here. Um, our exhaust might get in the way a little bit, but that's okay. And generally, the simpler the sway bar, aftermarket sway bar looks, the easier it is going to be to install. Because it's not trying to get it out of the way of so many things. So we've got these rear sway bar bushings. You just come off with some 12 mil bolts. And you've got the lower, lower mount there. So I think they gave us adjustable ones of those as well. So we'll throw that. That bolt's got a bit of corrosion on it. It does. Look at that. 
bit of schmutz. Almost Japan style. Yeah, we can clean that up. So this sway bar is out. So that mounts off. Jiggle it out of the way of the exhaust. If you can. Yep. Get him. We come that way. So suspension stuff is so pinchy. Nice. All right, so we'll lay it on the ground next to our new one the same way so we don't get confused like we did last time. Like that. And then like that. And away we go. It's one of the fun things about a mod like this is like you don't need much instruction. You can get an idea just from a quick glance of what's going on and then just get to work. All right, so sway bar link on. We should yep. be able to just feed it through the same as the other side. We leave it all loose. I've left these loose. We just sort of... See if we can get it in place and then bolt it all up, right? That's no, it. No, 19s size. again. They're 17s, I reckon. 5mm Allen key and 17mm. What's he? Yep, there you go. Thanks. We'll just snug these up and then do it properly. There you go. Yeah, yeah. boom. She's in. And then the sway bar link just has to be flipped around the right way and it should drop in. Boom. Boom. Getting those links in is a bit tricky, getting the sleeve, getting the sleeve to fit. But some other things they've done, which is really polite, like when you do these rear sway bar bush things, they've got little hooks that hold them so they don't fall on your head. Yeah, yeah. Like just, it's such a little thing, but it makes all the difference. Could I borrow your socket wrench, please? Do you need a spanner for the bottom or are both of yours done? Oh, I just need a spanner for the top. Oh, okay. Or either yeah, one. Sorry, you need, you need this. Unless you can fit a spanner in somehow. All right, Martin. Under tray, back on. Under tray action. I can't remember where there the front under tray bit went. Are these 10s or 12s back here? Um, it was only like an hour and a bit ago, but I still can't remember which way it goes. I can't remember. That's a 10. Yeah, these are all 10s, I think. And some of them are pluggy. Yeah, in the front one they are. Is that a 10? Yep. Have you got any more over there, mate? And I'll just bung all these ones in the bunghole. I'm just going to give you a collection and you can work it out. Thank you, mate. But they're the tens with the big, big hat on them. The big hat, for want of a better word. Cool, mate. Well, that was successful and enjoyable suspension upgrades. But they're all going to come into their own the second this thing's on a track again, where it belongs, where well, it was meant to be. This was an emotional you know, YouTube video. Oh, that's about right. Where well, it's emotional, Martin. Yeah. I forgot be that like, you were so emotional. This is about where it. the car belongs. This is where it feels like the road was made for it. This, this is, is where your life comes alive with the intensity of of Thor's hammer. We said that there was going to be no music in this episode, Martin. But right now we can wind in the music and emotional there it is. music. There's the emotional music. Yep. Are we, are Cars we... are about purity. They're about the adventure. They're about connecting with the world, connecting with the road, and most importantly, connecting, connecting with, with yourself. yourself. All right, <laughs> cut the music. All right. Good. Need another under tray. It's out there. Oh no, it's all the way out there. Martin, I need more. It's the under, but it's the under tray. Someone has to get it. Yeah. <laughs> You're get more it. outside of the car than me. Yeah, Can no, you get I'll it? Get it. That's fine. Yes. I just need more. Um... Ten mils. Yeah. I don't think there is. They, they get kicked. Oh, hang on. There's some here. They get kicked around a bit. Okay. The old 10 mils. That's... I don't need that. Does this hook onto something up here or not? I just get bolted this in. This just goes... Hang on. Does the plastic go over it or under it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, no, that's right. Is it? No. Uh, yeah, sure. There's bolt. There's witness marks. Apparently that's what they're called, witness marks. There we go. That can go in there. So, yeah, that seems right. It's not, not going to fall on anyone's face in the next few minutes. <laughs> Yeah, well, man, Martin, I'm sure it happens a lot. Thank you for your knowledge and general ingenuity. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Boundless, boundless and endless enthusiasm for all things automotive and modification-y. And the take-home messages are, yep. um, sway bars should make your car handle in a more handily kind of way. Yep, that's very scientific. <laughs> um, don't eat a lot of cherries before bed. No. Your guts will explode. And it's a well-known fact. I googled cherry fart. <laughs> and, and what comes up is like, is people saying, is it, is, do they make you go off your guts? They do. Um, a lot of people are going to be looking for that now. Um, and um, what else did we discover, Martin? Um, 
Is that everything? That, we already knew it, but that BRZs slash 86s are slow and pure. And so easy to work on. They are easy Great. to work on. Just so good. So good for ease of workingness. Um, You're too big. You know, and we yeah. also worked out Where that, that sway bars, in theory, mean you can retain a good amount of your stock suspension and incrementally modify to achieve a better result without ruining the car or slamming it on its guts and expecting it to still oh, yeah. handle, you know what I mean? I'm strumming your pigskin, mate. Yeah, man. Pigskin is like old harps, like, um, you know, like um, folky instruments are made with gut yeah. and strings. Yep. Like from animals. So when I say I'm strumming your pigskin, I mean I'm playing your tune. We're in the same key. Yep. We're fiddling the same fiddle. What goes there? Blowing the same horn, Martin. Did I do this wrong? Yeah. Does that, does that clip in somewhere and I've, I think I've done that one wrong. Have you? Have I? Does that clip in there? I can't even see that. Yeah, it does. Um, I think I, I think I buggered that up. Maybe I didn't. We need some 12s and some 10s, mate. And we just need to give everything the old... Whiz. The old ear hole. Ah. ah. Ear hole. Ah. Terrible. Ear hole. Ah. Um, Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this emotional roller coaster of disrespected nostrils. And thanks to everybody that watched the whole video. <laughs> Seriously, we you guys. Need to code so they can prove it. You guys came. That would be a novel idea. To what? Put in a code for people that watch the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. If you've watched the whole thing, you've got this far, then you know the code word, and you can put it in the comments if you so desire and wish. The code word is cherry guts. Yes. C H E R R Y space guts. But every second letter is like uppercase, like the purity <laughs> head gasket. So if you're just writing cherry oh, guts, you just drew, you just blew that bolt totally out. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. What are you talking about? It's fine. Um, cherry guts. With a combination of capitals and lowercase. Yeah, give me that wizard. And we know you got to the end. I just got to blast, <laughs> blast the heads off all of these. Where's it? Is that still got a twelve on it? No, this is a ten. Where's the twelve one? I don't know. Not. It's near. next to you. I need it. It's over there. Can I have that it? one? This, this one? is this is all. There you go, mate. This is all on the piss up here. Wait, I don't need to do the doodle uh, on the doodle. It's already tight, man. That one is. Oh, do you already do those? I don't know. Alright, good. <laughs> All I know it's, is I've, it started reasonably technical, I'm, and now we're just getting looser and looser yeah. as the day goes on. I don't know what's going on up here. Blast in the head of bolts. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching another disrespected, emotional nose of Mighty Car Mods. Thank you very much. See you next time. Next video, ear holes. Next video, we're going to be um, hanging out on the track. Uh, BRZ vs Subaru. That's right. The video will be called sixty thousand dollar Subaru vs fifteen. It will not. Thousand dollar Subaru. No, it won't. Because that is not that's what's accurate. happening. That is accurate. It's not what's happening, man. Yeah, but it is. They're comparable in price. You could go and buy a four to one, which is the exact same car. Oh my gosh. Or a BRZ. Dude, and just complete. Everyone the task. already knows because after your first video went up, everyone goes, "I went on car sales. They cost eighty thousand dollars." It's know. like saying that that. R34 Skylines are not worth $150,000. That's how much people are paying for them. That means that's how much they're worth. You don't have to agree with it. I don't agree with it, but that's how much they're worth. I don't want to agree with it because I want one for cheaper. <laughs> but the fact is, that's how much they cost. So, it is, if you wanted to go out and buy Martin's car, you would need $60,000. It's not what he paid for it, but that's what it's worth now. Now it's got bloody Martin's Mighty Mods tax on it. It's probably worth even more again. It's not. There's, Mighty Mods tax does not exist. Yes, it does. It does oh, not. You, now you're getting it destroyed does not. in the comments. It doesn't exist. Okay, Moto Compo is 500 bucks, then they'll 700 They were never $500. They were, yeah, they were. They and were then they're not. like 1000 and then we nah. put them on our show, and now they're like $7,000. You're, $7, like, you're doing that thing that shops do where they're like, 20% off, only like the day before. <laughs> It was already 20% off and they just jacked the price to no, then make it sound like... Jack the price by 25% and then the next day give you 20% off. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's bastards. what you're doing. Anyway, that's the end. If you want to support the show, of course, you can get some merch from mycomeons.com. And, um, oh. Yeah, it's unpleasant, That's isn't it. it. See you on the racetrack. See you on the track. $60,000 Subaru versus $15,000 no. Subaru. Hashtag <laughs> emotional cherry guts. See you next time. Bye.